are you today? As you know, I love books. I love good stories and I love sharing them with you. And I have such a great one today. I'm so excited. It's Erin Slater, illustrator. That's right, it's by that fabulous New York Times bestselling duo, Andrea Beatty and David Roberts. You've read some of their other ones and I just love them all. This one is so special. So I hope you like it as much as I do. Let's get started. At the end of the garden, in the soft fading light, when the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night, the sweet scent of jasmine floats in the air to mix with the music of laughter. And there, Aaron D. Slater soaks it all in in his flowery blanket tucked under his chin. Words drift like music, melodious, mild, a sweet summer song for a sweet summer child who drifts off to sleep as the cottonwood sways at the end of the garden, at the end of the day. It's summer then summer and summer once more. And soon Erin D is a youngster of four. The jasmine climbs higher, the roses have grown, and Aaron himself has a spot of his own for seedlings and saplings beside the slate walk, which he illustrates daily with a bucket of chalk. But what he loves most, oh, what makes Aaron's heart sing, is to listen to books in the old garden swing. To write stories, he thinks, is the greatest of things. But first, he must read. It's the best place to start, and young Aaron wants to with all of his heart but the words are just squiggles and try though he might, even with help, Aaron can't get it right. Why can't I do it? Why is it so hard? He goes back to drawing on slate in his yard. It's school time at last in his sunflower socks and poppy red jacket with matching lunchbox. He marches to class with a teacher's bouquet, ready to read by the end of the day. But he doesn't that day, or that month, or that year. And though he makes progress, it's painfully clear. He'll never quite get it like all of his friends, since he'll never stand out he decides to blend in. And so here he is at the start of grade two in his simple white t-shirt and matching white shoes. He tries to keep up, to blend in and to hide the tangle of feelings he carries inside. First, it goes well, since his teacher is new, a bit over and a bit overwhelmed by the hullabaloo. But things settle down and Miss Greer finds her stride. And once she gets rolling, there's no place to hide. Class, she says, here's an assignment for you. Write me a story, write something true. They all look excited, but look at Aaron. How does he look like he's feeling? Yeah. And so Aaron does what young Aaron must do. He works on his story like the rest of grade two. He writes through the evening. He writes through the night. He writes and he writes till the dawn's early light. And then he drags off to school with his shoes filled with lead and his stomach in knots and a pain in his head. And he waits for his turn with his heart filled with dread. Mm -hmm. 
Miss Greer calls his name and Aaron D. stands and unfolds the sheet in his trembling hands. And he reads, well, he tries, but it's so hard to start with 33 eyes peering into his heart. So he stares at his shoes and his sunflower socks. Then he closes his eyes and then young Aaron talks. Once, well, once there was a flower. No, wait, I know. Once there was a magical flower which gave all who held it extraordinary power. And so begins the most perfect of tales of an imperfect hero whose courage fails when the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night and the moon rises high and the dragons take flight. And who learns, after all, in the wee morning hours, strength comes from the heart, not in magical flowers. That beauty and kindness and loving and art lend courage to all with a welcoming heart. Oh, look. Look at this story. They're all on different colored pencils. Soaring. Miss Lila Greer. And when the quest ends and the sweet flower dies, the students all gasp and Miss Lila Greer cries. The silence that follows rattles his heart. He tries to say something, but where could he start? He turns in a paper with no words at all then blinks back a tear and escapes to the hall where Miss Lila finds him by the slate-covered wall. Time stops for them both, the teacher and boy. His heart fills with anguish. And hers? Hers fills with joy at the soul of this artist, courageous and true, she smiles and she whispers, Aaron, thank you. When she leaves, Aaron stands there a very long while. Then slowly, so slowly, he begins to smile. And he feels like he does with those books in the swing as a new hope inside starts to make his heart sing. He knows he can do the greatest of things in a way that's his own, in a way that's just his. He can stand out and show the whole world who he is. Like the mightiest flames that banish the dark. Hope grows in the soul from the tiniest spark. His art makes the difference. His art leads the way and helps him discover what he wants to say. And his reading gets better. Of course, it's still tough. But each day that they work is a little less rough. Like all imperfect heroes at the start of a quest, he must do what he can and hope for the best. Now in the hallway, a new garden grows with jasmine and poppies, a rambling rose, books, art and music, a dragon or two who soars through the sky of delphinium blue. The art tells a story, melodious, mild, furious, fragrant, wonderful, wild. It's all from the heart and all of it's true for Aaron, Miss Greer, and the kids of grade two. It's a place full of beauty for one and for all.
the illustrator's garden at the end of the hall. Oh, isn't that a beautiful place? Isn't that a beautiful story? And in the back of the book, when you get the book, there's a couple different notes from the author and from the illustrator that talks about how Aaron in the story has dyslexia, which about 15 to 20% of people have. It goes into a lot of interesting details, but the illustrator's note from David Roberts says this, as someone who struggled with reading and spelling and still does, I quickly learned how to read and tell stories with pictures. A picture can play with our imagination, make us feel the heat of a glowing sun on a cold winter's day, or feel the wind billowing through leaves when it's all quiet and still. We can share in someone's sadness or joy through pictures. Telling stories with Aaron through drawings has made this a very special book for me. I hope you all enjoy it. And I say the same, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this story as much as I have. Just remember to find your art, find your voice, find the way you can express it in the world because that's what's gonna make the world a better place. Okay, take care, friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.